Hello everyone. I can see there's some of you on here already. Uh, I'm just waiting for Victoria to join us. Um, if you can see and hear me, I'm just going to open up chat. Can you just say yes so that I know everything is working okay? Do you have any tech issues my end? If you just go into chat um, and if you can see and hear me, please say yes. Yes, brilliant, thank you. So I've got some familiar names on here. Hello, Carolyn, nice to see you. Um, thank you, Elizabeth and Sari for uh, confirming that you can hear. Brilliant, I'm just waiting for Victoria, the main guest today, to join us. Um, so then we'll start. If you have any questions, um, please do add them to chat. Um, we're, I'll get Victoria to answer them for you at the end, but I can keep an eye on them uh, while we're doing it. So, um, yeah, if you do have any questions about PR, anything at all, um, I know Victoria has uh, had a long and very successful career with the National Press um, and has loads of PR advice, so um, do pick her brains. Uh, I'm just... Uh, okay, I'm just going to send Victoria a... Um, a link because she can't get in at the moment. So bear with me just one moment. Right, I've just uh, sent on the link to Victoria. Lost your window for a moment. I can see and hear you, brilliant. So do any of you right now, we're waiting, do any of you have any um, PR questions uh, or PR successes you want to share? Um, anything at all? I know PR has been amazing for us. Um, and it's one of the things that first got TLC off the ground um, was getting PR coverage. We were in, I think, the Sunday Times. We were in all our local papers. Um, and some of that is just doing some of the things that Victoria is going to share with you today. Um, and just some basic things like checking journal requests on Twitter is brilliant. Um, and that's how we've got a lot of our early coverage. And once you do get on a journalist's radar, you often find they'll come back to you. Um, so Iwa says, uh, definitely new to PR, so very curious about this webinar. You're gonna learn lots. I've seen the slides already. Um, so I know Victoria's got lots to share. Um, and I actually met Victoria when she was interviewing me, I think it was The Telegraph. Um, so, so yes, so Victoria does know exactly what she's doing and hopefully, hopefully she's going to join us very soon because uh, really you don't want me to tell you about, know about my experience in PR because I'm not going to have as much as hers. So anyone else got any questions right now so I can make some notes of Victoria when she comes on live? Oh, she's here. So I'm just going to... Hi, Victoria. Hi, I've just unmuted myself. Brilliant. Um, I am just going to, I need to make you a panelist. Okay. Um, promote panelist, there we go. Um, so, can everybody, if in chat, um, so Sari says she's started a small children's online business, Pamper Party. Starting a mobile van in April, marketing as a week area. Brilliant. So hopefully you'll get some loads of tips from Victoria. Um, Victoria, I can't see you. Can you just turn on your video? Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Um, it says you've stopped the video. <laughs> okay, stop the video. Let me find you. Uh, panelists, here we go. Um, uh, make host change role to attendee uh, so we had this everyone we had a practice run last night and <laughs> zoom is it is i don't know how to make how to um more okay here we go um allow panelists to stop the video. there we go 
can never find the button. So hopefully Victoria will appear any second now. Uh, so if you turn your video on now, um, you should, there we go. Yes, hi. Hi everyone. So everyone is here. So can you all see and hear Victoria? Eva, Eva says hi, so brilliant. Yes, they can. So I try and um, share the screen and, and get the slides there. Yeah, so I just want to introduce you first. Yes, when she talks, yeah, that's perfect. That's how you should see it. So Victoria, do you really briefly want to do a top line? Um, yep. About so I'll just make myself bigger again. <laughs> well, that's you. Hold on. <laughs> no, when you talk, don't worry, when you talk, you go bigger. I do. Okay, great. I'm completely confused. Um, yeah, so uh, I wanted to talk about how to get into the media. And in fact, I'm just going to, my slides are now going in the wrong direction. So I'll just, oh, this is going to be a nightmare. Hold on. It always goes wrong live, no, don't worry. I'm sure it'll work in a minute. Yeah, let me just see if I can just make the slideshow work and then I can tell you a little bit about, ah, there we go. Yes, brilliant. I think we're at the beginning. Um, yes, so uh, just wanted to explain where I'm coming from because I'm a journalist. I've been working on all the national newspapers and magazines for um, three decades now, which is a bit scary. And um, one of the things that we always talk about when we get together is where can you find the next story from? I mean, it's, it sounds like a given, but actually it's so important to have um, good access to good case histories, good stories, things that nobody else has, has got. I mean, that's, it sounds obvious, but you would be surprised at how difficult it is to find fresh information, fresh stories, particularly for things like women's magazines, which may not get the first stories from a, that, that a newspaper would. And as I'm sure you're all aware, media these days, there's fewer staff. Um, it's newspapers and magazines are finding it harder to survive, so they cut staff, which means they find it hard to get stories. And so when we sit together and talk about, oh, we really need this, we often help each other. And I'd lost count of the times people had said to me, do you know somebody who runs a small business? They've started it at home and it's quirky or it's to do with childcare or it's to do with um beauty or it's green and, and we'd all ransack our friends you know we'd got long past looking just for um sort of contacts in other ways we, we'd be calling our friends who met at the school gate saying you know does, has anybody started a business this week we need you and from that it really struck me that what everybody needed and all my friends who'd started their own businesses needed was a way to bring everything together and to get their, themselves noticed in in the media and to do it without having to pay for traditional PR which most people find quite expensive at the beginning. So I wanted to try and facilitate that process and I set up Miss Dashford's Register to do that but at the same time it became obvious that people needed more advice on how to um, just how to get it right and, and how to make a good impression when they did speak to someone in the media. It's not just about the int introduction, it's actually about how you handle yourself and how you make sure that you're asked back and, and you're the first person somebody phones when they want to talk to a small business. So um, that's me. And I thought um, what I wanted to do with Hannah was come to you and say, this is how you can do it for yourselves. Um, because there's lots of tricks and hopefully this webinar will give you some idea of how to get in contact with journalists, how to get your business in front of people, and how to do it well, and without any regrets at the end. Brilliant. How does that brilliant. sound, Hannah? Yeah, no, brilliant, thank you. I, I just muted myself because uh, I've got people walking around in the office upstairs, so um, perfect. So I am going to pass over to you. If you have any problems, let me know. I'm going to mute myself and disappear off screen, but I am here. So <laughs> I'm excited about this, watching this as well. Um, if people want to ask questions as I go on, how do we do it? Don't worry, they'll ask it in chat um, and I'll bring the chat box up at the end. So, um, so just, just do it and we'll do the questions at the end. And please, everyone, if you do have questions as we go along, do put them in the chat box and I'll keep an eye on them. Okay, great. All right. Um, so first of all, we're just going to talk about, um, I'm just going to tell you who I am. So just to tell you a little bit more, I have worked for most of the major Fleet Street papers. I've worked for the Daily Telegraph, the Daily Mail, the Guardian, Woman and Home, Good Housekeeping Saga, but pretty much everyone you can think of, I have had a byline in at some point. 
and I specialise in what you might call lifestyle journalism. I think we used to call it features, but now it's it's more of a lifestyle thing. It covers um, uh, family, well-being, homes, um, a whole gamut of stuff, education. But I also might get called upon to do something in fine, uh, some small business related. Um, it, it can absolutely vary and anybody can call you and, and you, you respond. But that was why you need an incredibly wide database of contacts because your one set of contacts is not enough anymore. And that's going for every journalist I know. They, they, everybody has to be a generalist now. There's specialists are far and few, few and far between, which is fun for us, but makes us need you more. Um, and I've already explained how I came to set up Miss Dashwood's Register. It was just this desire to try and bring people together in a, in a relatively straightforward way that wasn't expensive and that you could dip in and out of. So Miss Dashwood's, I'll, come, I'll explain how it works later, but in, in essence, it's an online hub. Um, I've also written a book recently about boundaries, how to draw the line in your head, heart and home, which I'm going to talk to you about probably another day. Um, but it's relevant to this talk because once I'd written the book, I had to become someone who had to publicize themselves. And it was really interesting to be on the other side of the table and reach out to journalists I didn't know and try and make them write about me. Um, so it's been incredibly useful in every direction. So this is, this is as I say, it's the huge conundrum, the great case history search. And if you get a group of journalists together, uh, this is what they always talk about is, do you know somebody with three legs and um, a set of pot-bellied pigs in, who live inside? The crazier the case history, of course, the harder it is to find, but that doesn't mean we don't have to find them. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fence are lots and lots of small businesses who need to tell their stories in the media. And sometimes I think it can feel like you, you're try, all trying to put your hand up at the same time and nobody's hearing you. And you perhaps think that we're ignoring you, but that's not true. We're just getting lost because there's too many voices shouting at the same time and they all sound the same. So we hear from people who have a business and they say, I'm, I'm a mum, I set my business up at the kitchen table, I'm interesting. And where that was true 10 years ago, those are much more commonplace. We now need something more before we can say, yes, you at the back, you're the story for us. So I often say to people, you have to find your unicorn factor. And your unicorn factor to me is your USP. What is it that makes you special and specially interesting? You may be interesting in your, um, amongst your colleagues or, or your fellow small businesses because you're very niche at what you do, but that might not be the interesting thing to us. What might be interesting to us is that you set your business up at the kitchen table while moving house, while having twins. Or it might be that you set up your, bus your, your business in response to having twins. It might be that, that you read an incredible book and one night you sat up and said, That's, I'm going to do this. We need something more from you. It could also be something very simple. It could be something like a hobby. I, I, I say to people, think about the factors that we're looking for. It could be a local factor. It could be an age range. It could be a type of industry. But it could be something like we're looking for ukulele players and you think to yourself well yeah i do play the ukulele at weekends that's funny you should mention that um how on earth am i going to make that about my business making homemade cosmetics but that's how we that's that's how you will get your business in the press um one of the things that hannah and i were talking about earlier was the fact that it's so important with every business not always to be thinking about the big hit about a big everybody wants a big page in the daily mail it's great publicity but it's about constantly having your name brought forward time and time and time again. And that's what makes um, businesses look good. They look, it, it's brilliant online. Your rankings will soar. But most of all, other people will see your name over and over and go, yes, homemade skin cosmetics. That's what I need. Oh, isn't it sweet? She plays the ukulele. How brilliant is that? You become memorable. Um, and you, then you find your own uh, press pr starts to proliferate better. So how do they find each other? And this is the kind of the big question for all of us, I think. The obvious way is to get a PR agency. And some people will, will do that. There are lots of small PR agencies who do excellent work just as much as well as the big PR agencies. And they, they are brilliant. I'm, I'm not here to knock them at all. Absolutely not. 
if you see a PR agency, they will help you establish what your unicorn factor is. They will write up all your materials to promote you. Um, they will make contact with the media on your behalf. They should make you a plan that says, this is how we're going to approach the year ahead. We're going to do a push on you in March or perhaps in June. We're going to tie it to Wimbledon or we're going to tie it to school holidays. Um, they, they should give you a social media plan so that you know they're tweeting on your behalf and there's Facebook going on and, and it, it can take a lot of pressure off you. And it, there's no doubt about it. Good PR, good PR works. The cons are it's expensive. Um, it's hard for me to go price because prices do vary enormously, but um, you would be expected to, put, to, to have a retainer of a certain amount every month, a bit like having an accountant, I guess. Um, and the problem with that is your expectations are not always met because PRs at the end of the day cannot guarantee coverage. And they will say that to you, we can't guarantee it. They're not buying it. It's not advertising. If you want advertising, that's a different story altogether. And again, it's costly and you have to go to an agency. But PRs can sometimes promise more than they can deliver. And that can be frustrating for you as a customer and it can lead to a feeling of a loss of control. So the alternative is going it alone. And of course, when most people start businesses, that's what they do. The pros is it, it's cheap. You know, you will do, you, you can spend as little as you need to spend and you've got full control. You're the boss. And I think when I speak to entrepreneurs, one of the things that they come back to me all the time with is that they're good at this. They, they're good at doing their own stuff. They don't actually um, want to be told what to do. They, you know, they've learned to run their own accountancy programs. They use zero or they use whatever they sage or their own bookkeeping. They've worked out their own social media. They've worked out their packaging. They've had to. And so actually they quite enjoy the, they quite enjoy the control. And I, 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 I do too, actually. That's how I like it too. You can really tell your message your way. And again, if you feel that if you go to a PR and they're, they're trying to push you down a line you don't want to go, that's frustrating. Some of us, we, we are confident these days. We know what we want to say and we know what's good about us. Um, so I think it can be quite empowering. The cons are that you will start with a lack of contacts. Unless you come from a media background, you probably don't have many journalists that you can message on Facebook and say you know what guys write about me um, and you can and, and then with that brings a lack of confidence because obviously if, if you're entering a new arena you may be nervous at first and I, again I'm absolutely the same with that I felt it very strongly um, launching Miss Dashwood that I was entering this whole new world uh, particularly things like um, CMS oh my god all that kind of thing building your customer base it still blows my mind and, and but then every time I win I, and I do something right, I think to myself, yeah, I can do this. I, I, I'm better than I thought I was. So let's going to assume for the purposes of this webinar that you are going by yourself. Um, so you need a set of written materials. You absolutely need to create your own press pack. Um, and the first thing you have to do is create a press release. Now, I can give you people more information about that at another point. But in essence, what your, your press release is a who, what, where, when and how. You have to say who you are. And that means, you know, absolutely being honest. You are, you are Jane Smith. This is your age. This is where you live. Um, you'll need your contact details on it. You need to put, um, uh, it needs to explain what is good about your business. So if you make hats, you can say, I'm a hat maker. And then you can think to yourself, where do I live? I'm a hat maker who lives in Hampshire. What's special about my hats? Well, you know, I'm, I make hats for weddings. So I'm a wedding hat maker who lives in Hampshire. And you build it up like that. You're trying to find the interesting nuggets about you. What you tell your mum about your business. I've started, mum, I've started a business. What's your business about? Oh, I'm making wedding hats. Try and make some, find the most specifically interesting things about yourself. And that's what your press release should be. It's simply like writing a news story about yourself. And it should be very short, very simple, and just spell out the facts. You do need a piece of paper with your biography on it. And I'm not, you know, I don't want to know what you did at school. I simply need to know if I'm a journalist and I'm, and I'm going to speak to you, I need to know um, who you are, who's who in your family, everybody's ages, everybody's jobs, where you live. Um, this is information that, that we gather every time we do an interview. We don't always use it. And you can say to me, you know, my husband is going to kill me if you put his age in. But we will ask those questions. So 
everything you can preempt will make you more attractive as a possible story. Please get a lovely photo taken. Um, this is just so worthwhile. Get a, a high res and a low res version of the same photograph. If you can get it done by someone who perhaps does press work as well. So if you go to a local photographer, don't go to someone who's going to do a glamour shot, uh, much as we all like to look our best. Um, what you want is someone who's going to take a picture that looks a bit like reportage. You're in the middle of doing something. There's a nice picture in front of you on the slide. I hope you can see. Um, I can't remember which film it's from. Cary Grant and no, she's gone. Um, but they're busy. What's interesting about them is they're active. They're busy. They're doing something. Um, don't, you know, the, the old photograph of a white man in stair camera. Don't be like them. Be better than that. Take a nice active photograph, get someone decent to take it and get it in a couple of resolutions because you're going to send the low resolution because you don't want to clog anyone's email up and then you're going to offer the high res later. It's useful to put down any media you've already achieved. If you've just had a double page spread in Sunday Times, well, well done, obviously, um, don't send um, an email to the Daily Mail offering them an exclusive news story because they're going to find out anyway and then they're going to be cross with you because media doesn't like to repeat itself. So list what you've already achieved and then they can make a grown up decision about whether they're going to use you and if so, how. Facts and figures. Lovely. We love facts and figures. We like a percentage. We like a, something with a pound sign in front of it. Um, if you are the number one hat maker in Hampshire, brilliant, say it. If you had a turnover of 20 million pounds last year, say it. Anything that we can put into a headline, we're going to use. And lastly, quotes and sound bites. These are nice. Again, it's just something that, that journalists can pick up straight away and say to their editor, you know, I spoke to this fantastic hat maker. She says that blue hats are what everyone's wearing this summer. You, you want to create some, a, a, a dialogue that looks like it's already happening and that makes you sound like you influence other people. Now, if you can also bring in a quote that says, well, you know, the, um, the Countess of Wessex came to my shop last week. And she said to me, this is the finest blue hat I've ever seen in my life. And it is excellent value for money, even better. So then we'd have a nice quote from somebody famous. You'd have a quote saying, you know, you are now an influencer saying everybody's wearing blue this summer. You build up your story and give it to me. And, I, you know, half the work's done. So if I've got a range of hat makers to choose from, I think I might choose you because you sound most interesting. The next part of your plan, once you've got all your written materials together, and I would get your written materials together and store them in one place on your computer. So if you want to talk to a journalist, you can literally download it like a mini pack and send it to them. It's gotta be small and it's gotta be, um, don't send them megabytes because most journalists work from home and they've got to sort their own IT out if it goes wrong. Um, so then you're, you're gonna make a plan for yourselves. And the first thing to do with your plan is to include where you want to feature. Where is your dream outlet? Because a, a full page in the Daily Mail is not everybody's dream. It does work brilliantly for sales and you will get a lot of online presence, but it's, it isn't what everybody, where everybody wants to be. Some people actually want to be in their local paper. So if you are a cafe, it makes more sense for you to be in Hampshire Life or the Evening Standard than it does to be in Vogue. Make a list of exactly where you want to be. And this is your target list. Don't forget magazines, online um, websites. Um, think of local radio stations. Local media can be really useful for, for people looking through things. We all, you know, none of us think we read the local paper, but actually often you pick it up, you're in the, the, the surgery or you've gone to collect a takeaway and you pick up the paper and you go, oh, this is quite interesting. And, and you, you mentally clock things. Also a lot of national newspapers journalists will read local newspapers to find the starts of stories so they might read a local newspaper and say this is interesting this hat maker from Hampshire um oh she's got royal clients and, and she's quite outspoken um well, yeah she, she could be quite an interesting story because somebody said there's a news report saying that nobody's wearing hats anymore maybe she could talk about it then think to yourself what can I and what can't I talk about one of the things I find when I interview people is that they often are more worried about what they don't want to talk about than what they do. So make a list, perhaps two columns. What can I talk about? I can talk about my product. 
I can talk about my family. I can talk about my ukulele playing. What can't I talk about? I have an ex-partner. I don't want to talk about my ex-partner in any context whatsoever because he will complain. I don't want to talk politics. I'm really not interested in politics or I am very opinionated about politics and I, that could overshadow the whole thing. I'm not going to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about cash flow. My cash flow isn't established yet. I don't feel secure with that. That this is a topic for me to keep off. So make it really clear in your own head before anyone else speaks to you what's good and what's bad. Then ask yourself, for your business, are you the best spokesperson? You may run the business, but do you have an absolutely fantastically funny, clever, on-the-ball assistant who'd make a great face for the company? They, if you do something that's perhaps very youth-oriented, you might have a 24-year-old who does social media for you, and they might be mar far better to put in front of media than you. Is your online presence up to date and super tidy? Well, I would like to say mine is, but I doubt it is. I don't anybody's is. What you need to do is get online. Um, I often think if you can go, go and ask somebody else to look you up and, and see what they see, see it through their eyes. What does your Facebook look like? What does your Twitter look like? If they Google you, what are they seeing? Um, you need to be on top of that all the time. I mean, it's worth checking every month to see that something weird hasn't happened. And then you need to find a way around it. Um, if you find negative press about yourself that you are uncomfortable with, can you go and sort it out? Can you get somebody to take it down? Alternately, are you going to have to flood the system with good stuff to get to, to push it down the rankings? You really need to think about this yourself because you can't rely on other people. And once if you have great publicity from an article, you really don't want to waste that publicity by um, bad social media already in place or just clumsy stuff. It is, you know. Lastly, do you want to highlight any special offers? Um, any publicity is a great time to, to chuck a special offer forward. And it doesn't have to be huge. You know, we're, we're all simple creatures. We don't need to be given 100% free. We just need a, a sort of gesture that says, you know what? I get it's an expensive world out there. It's, business is hard. It's, it's not easy for any of us at the moment. So, you know, here's a 10% discount. I think they're quite good. To, I, I could be corrected about this, but I think it's quite good to time limit things. Um, so that you get people responding to your um, special offers um, within a certain period, because A, then you know if they're actually working, and B, it does create a sense of urgency. So I think people can then decide they want to um, follow up or not. Oops. What's going on? <laughs> no. Um, hold on a minute. I can't seem to change. Oops. Hannah! Are you okay? <laughs> Lost my slides! It's iCloud, I think, it's playing with it. Okay, I'm going to reload it. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, while well, Victoria's everyone. doing that, does anyone have any questions so far for Victoria? Um, I have to say, all the information so far has been brilliant, I, I think. Um, are you back? Right. I'm just getting a mouthful of coffee, everyone. Sorry, I'm getting dry. <laughs> I love how slick our webinars always are. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like I'm talking down to the corner. I hope that's not a problem for everybody. I'd like to think I'm looking all at you, but I think I'm actually looking down. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's right. You're looking at a tiny little kind of window in the corner. I'm going to let you carry okay. on now. <laughs> okay, great. No problem. Um, so at this point, I thought um, I'd bring in a case history. Um, uh, Shahrazad Ambreen um, is one of uh, Miss Dashwood's clients. And Shaz is fantastic. She is honestly, she's one of the, the loveliest people in the world. And we met on Twitter. So, you know, proving it, Twitter works. It really does. Um, Shaz uh, is, um, she works for the Co Cooperative Society, but she also was desperate to launch a range of shoes, as you do. And she decided to make the most comfortable shoes in the world. And she created these things called 18 hour, 18 hour heels. And they really are remarkable. They're, they're great shoes. Can't recommend them enough. Um, and she, she um, joined Miss Dashwood. And in a conversation, she was saying, you know, I really want, where do I need to be? And she said, I just need a big splash because I've got nothing at the moment. You know, I, I don't know. What, I, I, I mean, she hadn't, she hadn't started. And we had a request through with um, a Daily Mail writer who was looking for something new and looking for something specifically for the sort of Monday section, which is quite 
um, uh, it, it's often uh, often about self and 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 it can be about clothes or it can be about trying out new things and so we put Shaz forward with her 18 hour heels that you can wear 18 hours during the day and um alice said oh yes this sounds great perfect and Shaz like oh well that's nice you know this, this sounds great well we were all thrilled when alice took a pair of shoes wore them for a day um it was as you can see i think if you i don't know i can't probably I'm, I'm pointing, I'm pointing. Shaz got a full page in the Daily Mail. I mean, the cost of that is tens of thousands of pounds in advertising terms. And, um, but the resp her response was so amazing. They sold out of shoes in one day. Orders from nine countries. Um, more than 7,000 visitors to the website. The reach of half a million people on Twitter and half a million people on Facebook. Um, they, they, uh, they, she had to travel to, to Dubai, to Canada. She, she was literally, she's, I mean, she still runs two jobs, incredibly, you know, she's still working for the Cooperative Society and running her shoes. But now, her, from this piece of publicity, she pushed that as hard as she could. She talked to everyone, she emailed people. Um, and since then, her shoes have appeared in all the glossy magazines, she gets into uh, Sunday Times style. Um, but best of all, she's doing what she loves. And what makes these shoes isn't just the shoes. The shoes are great, but comfy shoes are comfy shoes. It's Shaz that's making the difference all the time because she also gives a percentage of the money that she makes from the shoes into a not-for-profit group that educates girls in Pakistan. Um, she's a lovely spokeswoman for her brand. She's really ethical, really sound, kind person um, who also loves cool shoes. So she's got so much to talk about she's from birmingham so she ticks the birmingham boxes if there's if someone wants a birmingham businesswoman she can answer that she can talk about being an entrepreneur she can talk about running two jobs she can talk about um being ethical and 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 putting put you know putting back into the community she's got so much to talk about um and i honestly don't think she realized that when she started she was just like oh, i make shoes what am i gonna do so um, we've had some other really lovely stories like that. We had um, another woman called Martha who um, responded to a request um, about to talk about um, her son who has autism. And she is not trying to make money from this. She wants, she gives talks, she was giving talks to schools in her local area because what she wanted to do was go into schools and see that parents really got it and teachers got it, that if you've got a child with autism in your classroom, you have to work differently. You, you know you you can make it better for everybody and that was her premise and so she did the one article and from that one article the today show wanted her on um, radio for today wanted her on um uh, woman's hour had her uh, she appeared in one of the sundays and and she's been able to snowball it very quietly because she's not trying to make a fortune she just wants to get into more schools and, and help with educating um so it was really exciting for her and it shows you that one hit is the start of something. And, and that's what we want to try and help people do. So um, where to find opportunities? Right. The first thing is a PR mail shot. And it's slightly old fashioned, but it can still work for a targeted campaign um, and for local media. If you want to be in good housekeeping and you have got your press pack organized, you've got your great photograph, you're the hat lady, remember, blue hats. You've done your photographs, you, you've, you've created everything. You can still send that in. You can send it in, in hard copy or you can email it. If you've got a fantastic photograph, um, you, it would almost be worth sending it in by post because we don't get as much post as we used to. So a really lovely photograph might really, stay, if it fell on someone's desk, might really stand out. Um, but at the same time, you can email it to people. Um, local media, again, there's no harm in, if you find your local, if you want to be in your local newspaper, go to your local newspaper office, go to the desk, take it in, physically take it in and hand it over the desk and, and, and or ask if there's a reporter there, you could just give this to directly. Um, sometimes the old ways are still, they still work. Use Twitter to identify and follow your preferred journalists. This is something that um, really simple to do. You know, you again work out which journalist that you think could write about your story. They've written about similar stories in the past. They have um, they write for the newspaper you want to be in or for the the online site that you really love. 
follow them don't immediately tweet them saying you wrote about blue hats yesterday and i want to tell you about blue hats because my blue hats are better they've just written about it they're not gonna write about it again just start to become part of their community um if they're having a conversation an open conversation join in with it you if they might be set they might put up a tweet saying i'm looking for um people who take flying lessons at weekends and it might have nothing to do with your business but you do know a guy who does that you could tweet them and say hey joe smith why don't you check out john smith over here he can help you journalists do remember that we notice a community and, and we all have them um it's like any friendship you don't force it you don't push it but just gently join in journal request hashtag can be really useful um it's worth looking at one of the reasons it can get quite spammy um it can also get um a lot of requests up from journalists and students and obviously everyone's got to start somewhere you know i was a student once um but i do say to clients be aware if you talk to a journalist and student that's probably never going to see the light of day if you want to respond do it for goodwill do it for practice but don't do it for results um so i'm i'm just aware when you see a journal request do always check the biography of, of the of the person who's putting up your request before you respond because they may not be who you want to speak to um they may also be from abroad and they may not want you you may not want them and then it's pointless um but it's definitely worth having a regular eye on facebook groups which have a connection to your world um facebook groups are, can be really useful for this there are some Facebook groups which are specifically aimed at, at case history searches. So you could put that into your search, look up case histories, and that might be something you can join. Um, one of the groups that I join, I mean, I, I belong to a journalist group, which is, you know, where we all post constantly what we're looking for and people do try to offer help. Um, but there are business groups locally you could try. You might find a community of, um, uh, if you join a community community of working mums, journalists may rec put requests into there. Um, and the same with check the media request sections of Mumsnet and other online communities. Um, I'm often amazed that people, journalists put requests into them and it costs them to put, it costs them money to put these requests forward. So they are serious about this. And often people just joke, they reply jokingly or insultingly or whatever. And yet it could be really useful, you know, and if you've got a business, super useful if you've got a connection to a charity register your availability as a spokesperson so you're the blue hat maker but you also um, are very interested in, in arthritis research because you have arthritis talk to the charity say i would like to be a spokesperson for arthritis among people of working age um, the great thing about it is that they will give you media training they will probably set you up with decent photographs if you ask them and then you get to mention your business too so it's a win-win for both a good cause and for you and lastly of course you can join Mustache Register more of which later ah here we go <laughs> yes I'm afraid Tom doesn't actually work in the office um, which is obviously a great source of sadness to us all um, so Mustache Register we're a quite small lean operation there's myself and another journalist called Kate Stewart um, and we work together we aim to put those media opportunities in front of you in your inbox so we talk to people we check journal requests we check the Facebook groups we talk to our colleagues our colleagues talk to us uh, we nag people constantly what are you looking for what do you need and then we put through every day probably three four maybe two good requests. So it's up to about 20 a week. And they're very, very varied. And actually I was thinking people are gonna to want to know what we've asked for recently. So I have printed them off. This is the sort of request we've been having in February. We've had um, uh, concept store experiences, female leaders and CEOs in retail, fathers who weren't present at the birth of their child, uh, innovation, SMEs and startups, um, accessible traveling, digital, people who use digital sponsored advertising, uh, a conscious thrifty family, London based for a documentary about renewable energy, seeking HR experts and business owners, SMEs that export beyond Europe, um, someone who took two weeks maternity, level, uh, maternity leave for their career. They're all coming in from places like the Times, um, the Telegraph, we've got uh, 
the uh, is it the Outlook? The Outlook. Um, the TV documentary was ITV. Um, lovely one here. Somebody's looking for a real life Meghan and Harry. They want a couple called Meghan and Harry for obvious reasons who are getting married. Now that again, you might think, oh my God, who's gonna, how's that going to work? But if you run a wedding business and you happen to have a client called Meghan who was marrying a Harry or a Henry, brilliant. You, you, you're going to clean up. You can get it easy to get your, your whole outfit, your dresses, your shop, international newspaper with no sweat whatsoever um a lot of the times we get oh this is a lovely one do you weigh less than your dog um so uh, a daily mail journalist is looking for women who have dogs that weigh more than eight stone um now again you might be thinking no one has those dogs but actually surprisingly number of people suddenly announce no i've got a great dane um, and it would work really well for anyone in the pet industry because again they're going to have access to people with enormous pets and say to the owner do you mind doing the story for me um if you do the story for me i can mention my we can mention my business in it you know and you know i'll give you a sack full of um dog food or something uh the ft i think was doing a, a column called how, how i know it's the guardian called how i spend it and looking for case histories for that and that's an ongoing column so if you're interested if you're happy to talk about money and some people are absolutely fine with that you could go in there and talk about your business quite at length i imagine um but lots of other things uh single parents under 35 to talk about positive experiences women who are too busy to dream um national marriage week pension plans um all kinds of crazy stuff so the opportunities are there and, and you will get about 20 in your inbox um every week uh we also offer advice but most people once they get the hang of it they fly they don't need us and they don't particularly want us and you know no that's how it should be um but what we do is we give you an advice pack just a very small advice pack when you start out and if you are worried we say please give us a call just give us a phone because um it's awful the thought of having to go on radio and feeling nervous and i'd rather you rang me and said you know what i am going on five live in a, in half an hour how am i going to breathe because then we can just calm you down a bit and again most people need this like once um and then they're off if at all um we also offer extra services um if people do want their press release written for them we can do that for you as well that's an extra cost but um everything is we try to keep it very affordable the cost is seven pounds 99 pounds seven pounds 99 a month or um we do an uh, annual price of 79.99 for the year um but anyway that's enough about us let's talk about process so the first thing to do is is you're already i know i can hear you all already saying yeah but i wouldn't want to be there i wouldn't want to be in that newspaper i don't read that newspaper i don't like that newspaper so the first thing we're going to ask you to do is is unravel that a bit and say don't jump to conclusions you may want to be you may read the guardian but the best place for you to be is in the daily mail and then we're going to say to you you know park park yourself here where does your product going to sell what where's the best online presence um you know you may feel that the thought of um something appearing in something like saga you're like well, i'm not that old but what if you your product is absolutely you know my hat maker her hats are going to sell in saga that's where she wants to be even though she might read the pool so really try and think uh, to park all your preconceptions um we talked about knowing what you want to say and what you don't want to say the two columns so be certain in your mind of this and particularly two things what you absolutely are going to say in this interview and what you are never going to say and so we i want the polarized points if you are absolutely going to say my price point is seven pounds 99 a month but you're absolutely not going to say um I don't like the queen. These are the two things you need to put up. Practically yellow post-it notes at the top of your thing, of your screen, and don't mix them up. Do warn colleagues or relatives who may be affected by you speaking to the press. You don't want awkward conversations later. You absolutely want to be on top of this. Um, if you have an ex-business partner who is going to be livid at seeing you in the Daily Mail, but who could be headed off early, really pick up the phone and have that conversation. I'm going back to the biography here. Be prepared. You will always be asked for your name, age, occupation, hometown, and biographical details for partner and children. If you don't want to give them, have a good reason. 
most of the time they won't be used but you will get asked because it places you and there's something really mimsy about a woman in particular saying oh i don't i don't like seeing my age in print you know get over it it's really not that big a deal do you have to be photographed yes you do i again i'm not going to apologize for this you may not like being photographed get over it okay and now we're going to press our imaginary pause button you've emailed a journalist to say yes i have an enormous dog i have a dog the size of a pony that lives in the house and by the way, I'm a great hat maker. The journalist has come back to you and said, yeah, I, I want your dog. I need your dog in my article. Um, this is what I'm going to ask you to press pause because even though it's probably really exciting to say, yes, I'm going to do it right now, make sure that you want to do it as much as they want you to do it. You know, we can get really desperate if we're on deadline. Think to yourself, is this what I want to do? Because you can still back out. And if you do want to do it, what's the best way to do it? Do you want to do it on the phone? Do you want to do it face to face? Should it be at a neutral place or your home and office? Um, if uh, I say, I've said here, what would make good visual imagery for a broadcaster? But actually it's true for photographs too. If, I, if, so, if I'm doing a story with a photographer, I always think, is there a park nearby? Could we take a photograph outside? Could we take a photograph um, that's going to look good in colour in a newspaper? And, you know, there's nothing like a sunny day, even in winter, in, in a, and a bit of greenery to, to make a newspaper look beautiful. And so I know that the better the picture, the bigger the story. I'm going to get more space from my editor. And so it works for me, but it also works for you. Would your company logo be allowed and fit in? Nobody is going to do a press photograph with somebody with a big T-shirt with a big logo on it. That's not going to happen. You'll be told to change that. Could you have a discrete pin? Yes. Could you have it maybe up there? I'm, I'm, I've tried to put my, it was time tiny, but I put my little business card up there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a it, subtle placement, not a problem. If it's for a broadcaster, ask if it will be live. Live can be terrifying, but it's instant. It's quite exhilarating. And there's actually less things can go wrong. I want to remind you here that you are not going to be, you're not being grilled on the daily politics by Andrew Neil. You are talking to journalists who want to talk to you, who are interested in you, and who are going to be positive. It is, this is not about someone catching you out. You aren't working for the local council and you've been taking funds, you've been putting your hand in the till. You've got a lovely product. They want to do your lovely product. This, is, this should be a win-win. It's not about you being tricked into saying something you don't want to say. Having said that, be prepared for feeling misquoted. Um, you won't have been. You, if, you, if you're worried about that, feel free to record the interview too. Journalists will never mind an interviewee recording, putting their recorder down saying, do you mind if I just do this as well? I need to hear back what I say because I want to improve myself. Um, sometimes we just don't say, we don't come across the way we, th we think we do. And that can be tough the first time it happens. And, and I speak from experience too. It's a shock to see yourself on TV. It's horrible hearing your voice for the first time on radio. And yeah, you don't always get it right. But overall, you're still aiming to get one basic message across, which will be that I'm a hat maker. Come see my hats. Um, try not to get, don't sweat small stuff, as they say. Everybody makes mistakes. We're making mistakes in this webinar. Things are quite transient. And, and what's lovely about modern times is that we seem to be more forgiving of each other for that, I, I think. Um, the way that businesses often change as we as we grow, you don't have to get it right first time. It doesn't have to be hundred percent perfect. Ease up on yourself. Um, so you are speaking to the journalist. You've agreed to do it. You're go you're going ahead. And the first thing I say is be friendly, be open, be positive because it's this is a meeting of two professionals. Um, it's not cat and mouse. You know, it's not Jeremy Paxman. It is actually a working person like you who just wants to get their story done so they can get home and have tea with the kids. It, it's, it, it, don't build it up too big in your head. If you're open and positive and friendly, then they will be back. If you do make a mistake and you say, God, I love hats, but I hate the Queen, immediately say, look, I'm sorry, I would ask you not to print that part or that part does need to be off the record. Again, uh, we're not state secrets here. A journalist can be pretty understanding about this kind of thing. As long as you're straight with them, be honest, be open. Say, look, I, I you know, I didn't mean that. That's come out wrong. Um, it's, it, I think it's pretty rare that you would be 
court for that. If you do get drawn into a line of questioning that you're uncomfortable with, take a breath and hold. I mean, the obvious thing here to say is at the moment, if you're doing a business interview, you might get asked about Brexit. This might be something you just don't want to talk about. It doesn't matter your positioning on it. It's something that you feel is a distraction from where you want to be. So if I ask you that question, how do you feel about Brexit? Take a breath, stop, halt yourself. Don't rush into an explanation of what you do or don't feel. Just say, um, that's not a conversation I want to have at the moment. Can we get back to my large dog, my hats and my ukulele? And don't be an armchair expert. Um, if you're not 100% sure about blue being the right colour for hats this season, don't try and blag it. We will notice that. Um, be gracious. Never ever say that you are the best hat maker and, and Mrs Miggins down the road is awful. Don't say that. It's, uh, you don't want to start a war. Um, don't complain about anyone. Positive. And make sure you've got a short mission statement or, or, or sentence which sums up what you want to promote. At the end of the interview, ask the journalist if you've made that point and if it's clear to her. I just want to say again, I make blue hats. Royals love them. I live in Hampshire. Blue hats are the future, according to my research. Um, did you get that? And, and then we're all clear. Um, just a few, a few, I'm going to throw a few cautionary things now again. And, and editors are the ones who decide what appear, uh, stories appear, when they appear, what length, which pictures get used, and they write the headlines. So there is absolutely no point in you ringing up a freelance journalist, and most journalists you speak to be friends, or a staff one, and saying, well, I thought it was going to be bigger, and I, I really like that picture, and the headline is shocking, because it's not their fault. Um, it's quite reasonable to send them a, a little email and say, do you know, this wasn't what I was expecting. I understand it's not your fault. Is there any way to clarify or correct the bit that's really concerning you. Um, bear in mind, only fight the battles you really have to fight. If your website address is on it, you've won the big one. That's the, the in, my, in my mind, that's pretty much the only thing I'd fight is to say, stick, I, I, you know, I agreed to this feature for, to, to, um, to promote my business. I really need my business website on it. Um, pretty much anything else that you can live with. If something really awful has happened, you can approach the media ombudsman service and i think that's a reasonable thing to do and contrary to everything you may have heard we take in the newspapers we take it very seriously if somebody comes back to us with a press complaints commission and they say um you know there's a real query here we do take it seriously and journalists will get told off quite hard nobody wants that so we do try not to make mistakes um so i'm just gonna mouthful of cold coffee here the follow-up when that first article, like lovely Shaz's page in the, in the Daily Mail goes out, your job is, is just starting, it's not over. So enjoy it for about half an hour, have a celebratory cup of coffee, call your mum. Then get down to the, the next work, which is spreading and sharing it over and over again. Obviously, I'm assuming that most people are pretty media, social media savvy, but it's worth remembering you can do this again and again and again. You don't have to just tweet it once um you can tweet it uh, I, I think the, the best engagement is tweeting it a couple of times on day one then again on, on once on, on day two and then once again on uh, after a week um i'm sure some social media people know better than me about that but um certainly you need to push it online on every outlet that you've got then there's local media local media um if you've, if you've appeared in a national newspaper, you absolutely should contact your local newspaper to say, look, this is me, I was in the national newspaper, um, and I think there's a lovely local twist to this story. Um, you might, it might be, let's talk about our blue hats lady. Our blue hats lady has had a lovely page in the Daily Mail showing off her blue hats and royals and, and all the rest of it. You write your local newspaper and say, well, the, the charming story behind this is I was inspired to make blue hats because there's a beautiful old blue stained glass window in our local church they've just renovated and i took that blue and that was the color of the hats that i wanted to see so you create a new narrative you're telling story you're a storyteller um do your homework i'm not entirely sure what i meant by this actually now it's embarrassing isn't it uh, but i have i think there's a um, uh, there's a blog on our website about um 
father uh, about this about making the most of your media mention and i think i've done a blog for talented ladies which i must send you Anna. um just it's it's all about tying up do your analytics i think that's what i meant analytics yes check your analytics what engagement have you got um you have got to leverage this story out now it, it, one piece is not enough and it's up to you to do it and you're the best person to do it you are ah well there we go there's the, there's the one I was looking for. Social media. Tweet a link to the article when you appear um, or the segment. Um, thank the journalist and the media outlet via their Twitter handles because that gives them an incentive to retweet it. Um, and you want their audience as well as your own. Schedule a tweet for two days later with the in case you missed it hashtag. Another five days later, still celebrating. Um, you want your Facebook post, put it, pin it to your page and keep it there until you have new, new news. Share it with your Facebook groups, make the post public. Uh, do a live video to celebrate. Don't forget dear old LinkedIn, I think we all forget LinkedIn, but actually I'm amazed that every time I remember to sing on LinkedIn, I get something back from it, which is, you know, humbling. Instagram or Pinterest, if, you, if you're visuals, um, do a selfie of you reading the article. Add an offer or discount, a new offer or discount, to celebrate this great media coverage, I am making it 15% off for one week. Local media, as I said, email your local press. Um, again, you can be moving to a new premises. Maybe you've got a connection with a, cha a local charity or your school. Go into your school and do a talk about blue hats and hat making. Get the press to come in with you to see if a new generation of hat makers are going to be come inspired to, to, to create crazy hats. Um, or you could offer them an opinion piece because, again, local newspapers are absolutely cash strapped. A nice piece of free copy by a lovely informed person who has already appeared in the national news. It's a win-win for them. Uh, check your analytics. Um, which social media site has given you the best engagement? And this is for the future, so that you can um, tailor make all the future announcements to where your audience is most interested. Now, uh, you can't see me, I'm at the back of this slide. I don't, um, uh, and this is my story because I've written this book, which I've got somewhere. Okay, I'm just coming back. My lovely yellow book, I'm so proud of this. It came out in January. And I thought naively that, you know, PR would be, would just happen. I don't know why I thought this, I should know better. So it quickly became apparent that if I wanted it to have the boost that I wanted, it was going to, I was gonna have to do an awful lot of work. And so I made all my lists. I decided who and where best that I thought it was going to be. And I started work. And so, and I appreciate I've got better contacts than most people. So, but it's still, I've still got to make my case. You know, you've, nothing is for free. And with the best friendships in the world, you've still got to be able to get through their, them and to their editors and their, get their editors believing in what you're doing. So I pitched it to the Daily Telegraph and I did very well. Got three pages in one of the weekend sections. Lovely. And that was my calling card. And I used that to get in other places. Um, what it did at the same time was it flicked into uh, other people picked it up. So the independent then um, saw it and ran it as one of its top eight self-help books of the year. I hadn't done a thing. That was rolling media. It, it liked what it saw. It did its own thing. Um, I noticed that Woman in Home magazine had done a book review of it. So I cut that out and posted and stuck it around. Um, then Good Housekeeping were in touch and they wanted a piece about it so that was lovely um, and and they were a bit unsure and then all of a sudden we talked about it, I explained what it meant to women of, of the age who read Good Housekeeping how it would help you with your crazy juggling with with you know caring for elderly parents caring for, caring for children managing a job um, they loved it they did a great piece on it we ran a book launch locally and invited lots and lots of local people including lo the local paper now the local paper was in an office exactly opposite um, the book launch and we sent them an invitation and they didn't come and which was frustrating but you know not everybody wants to do everything I got an email a few days later from the journalist say, saying I missed your launch I'm really sorry about that and I've just seen you in good housekeeping I really need to do an interview with you so it was this constant how things play backwards and forwards one was never enough you have to keep layering and then other people come into play um, so from the back of that, 
even now we're still ringing and emailing radio stations and saying well you know we've appeared x y and z we want to appear with you we've got things to say um and now we're trying to make them topical so we're trying to say um uh because the book's about boundaries we're talking about sexual harassment at work could boundaries help this we should be a spokesperson on your show um and in fact we're now going to be doing london radio next month as a result of our kind of sustained campaign of of, of trying to be out there um, we've been twittering like quite crazy about the book um going on instagram linkedin facebook um, and we keep an eye on the media requests too. do it for ourselves as well um, jenny who wrote the book with me is a psychotherapist and so whenever i see a media request coming into miss dashwood's looking for an expert in uh, children parenting um, education psychotherapy of any type psychology of any type i'm like jenny you should do this one uh, so she's um obviously uh bearing the brunt of all that and i'm sending her forward for interviews that i couldn't do so you see it's picking the right spokesperson for the job i can do it on a broad level but i need her for the niche stuff i can do it on a personal level i can say this is how boundaries work in my life she's brilliant for saying how boundaries work in your life um and you know it's nice to have two people carrying the loads so if you've got someone else who can help you with this yeah i think that's good um so we have come to questions amazingly and i've still got a voice left so <laughs> i'm hoping people have got questions thank you that was great i just want to say to everybody i am actually on your register and i, I joined this week and it is brilliant um the, the the things that come through and it really is instead of having to go on journal requests and filter through all the rubbish that's on there and remember to go on there um, they come through to you and you can just cherry pick and they are brilliant and i think and I, th there is no incentive for me to say this because i am um, i don't get any money for this i have no <laughs> business whatsoever but i genuinely do recommend i think it's brilliant value um i i would sign up for it Hannah, one of the things that we said yesterday was that what people kind of need to understand is they don't need a hit every week. Mm. Actually, one decent hit is enough. And then you can build off from that yourself. Yes. And, and, and it's just, if you had like two or three a year from that, that's all you would need. Um, I, I think it's really, really good. In fact, even one came in today and I'm thinking, um, should I go for that about garden? Um, oh, go for it. It's a lovely one. <laughs> I would have to photograph only one corner of my garden because the rest is a mess. But anyway, <laughs> it, it is negotiable. Yes, <laughs> but it, it is um, it is so important. And just as, as an aside, before we get into questions as well, um, I have a general request for anyone on here. If you have a friend, if you are a regular reader of TLC, you know how passionately we are against multi-level marketing, which is in effect pyramid schemes that prey on mothers. And most people, as in 99.6% of people who engage in them, when they take into account their expenses, do lose money. Um, and we have got a national newspaper really interested in covering this. But we need case studies of people willing to come forward and tell their story. So if you know anybody or if you uh, are um, someone who, who has an experience in this, please do let us know. Um, you can email me, hannah at talentedladiesclub.com. Um, and I'd be really grateful because we do really need to make more awareness of this. But that is a whole, now I've got you captive. And now we're talking <laughs> about media. That was a, a personal interest little thing yeah. there. Um, we have got a question from Carolyn, which I will scroll up to have a look at. Um, if anyone else does have any questions, please do ask. And there was one, Victoria. Um, let me just scroll up the slide where to find the opportunities if it's easy can you just scroll back to that i hope it's easy i'm not, not. promising oh yeah oh, brilliant where to find opportunities so while victoria's doing that i will scroll up and have a look at carolyn's so brilliant so carolyn's got a question yeah um, hi carolyn really good question um how short is short for the press release i can't see the difference between the press release and the blog in terms of content Okay, so a press release is really short. I mean, again, you you know, if you if you imagine if you imagine reading an email from somebody um, who wants to sell you a fridge, um, what do you want to, to see? You want to see make, color, model, price, size, probably a nice review, um, and if there's a quirky factor. I have to, I have to talk about stories as fridges because I think it's a way of demystifying them actually. Um, you know, no one should be precious about stories. So, so think of it as a fridge. Your fridge, 
that's all you want to know. So that's all I want to know. I don't want a long discussion, um, which could be a blog, I think, is, is somewhere where you probably um, go into more of a sort of um, more of your thoughts about something. We don't want thoughts. We want facts. Um, we want to know the absolute um, simpl simplified version of what you are about. And so that's why I was trying to boil it down to my, my hat maker from Hampshire. A blog would, I could see a, a good press release. It's probably just bullet points. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a story. We will write the story. You give us the facts. And I think that's what is different. The content of the blog is a story. I think, and, and so that you've brilliantly answered Kate's question because she asked just <laughs> that. It's a, but it's a press release, almost a bullet point list rather than a story. So yes, Carolyn's just qualified qualified what she said she meant the bio she mentioned and I would oh sorry yeah it, it, it's no no it, she, she it, it did come up as blog um it's not your bio it's the hook isn't it Victoria yeah. it, it, it's related to this um yeah. if but, uh, Karen if you still have questions about that do ask so sorry I apologize if I haven't pronounced your name correctly I'm always terrified of people's names wrong but she asks um is the PR alert service like having a part-time PR company? Is that why the price is so reasonable? I'm sorry for repeating yourself. Before Victoria answers, I just want to answer this as someone who uses the service, because that might be helpful, because I can see it just from a consumer's point of view. Um, it's, it's a very lighter way of having a PR. A PR company will do much more for you. They will be more proactive. They will take your story and they will go out and try to make things happen. Um, Miss Dashwood's Register doesn't do that, although I understand that, you know, that Victoria can write a press release for you for an extra charge if you want. But the brilliant thing for me as a business is I go about my day. I run my business without having to think about PR. And in my inbox pops a, an alert from Miss Dashwood and it will say, looking for a company that helps mum start businesses, for example. And I could think, oh, that's me. And I'll click on the email and it will say, a journalist at the mail is looking for a woman who runs an online website, helps mum start businesses. And I can then reply. Or it might pop up, looking for a business that makes hats as the subject line. And I will think, well, that's not me. I can see it's come from Miss Dashwood, so I know it's a media request. I don't make hats, I don't even have to open it. So to me, the benefit for 7 99 a month, I don't have to go on general request. The opportunities get emailed to me. You're not overwhelmed by them. I was victorious this yeah. for a day. Um, and they just appear in your inbox. You know what it is and you can open it or not. To me, that is amazing value because I can just open the ones that relate to me. I can email off to them and it does filter through. I did used to check the general requests on Twitter and, it, you know, it is, it is free, which is great, but a lot of rubbish on there and you do reply to a lot you never hear back from. Your hit rate is yeah. fairly low on there because they're just broadcasting to everywhere. So, Victor, I don't yeah. know if you want to add anything to that. I think, I think that's absolutely true. We, we've always said very clearly we're not a PR service and, and you know, we are working journalists. Um, so we come with a very different mindset. And that means that we're not going to be taking your business and, and, and running with it. Um, but we can give you a kind of different viewpoint. We give you an insider viewpoint. Um, and that in a way is, is our, that's our unique selling point is that, that there are, I know there's, I mean, it's fair to say there are, there is a, there is a very, very big media request service. If you don't know it, it's called Response Source. Um, and that's huge. It's, um, but it's a very different beast and it's very expensive. I mean, we're talking hundreds of pounds a year. I think it's, um, if you, if, and that's just, if you are a part of the, I think if you want requests that are in the women's sector, um, it's 1200 pounds a year. So I think that gives you an idea of the alternatives. And what's interesting about that is they, they are much more, um, the, that, that, that everything goes through them so you know if you if you belong to that you'll get you'll get a wash with stuff again most of it won't be relevant to you um and a lot of pr companies use it and then they send endless emails back to journalists saying you know i know you wanted um a hat maker who loves big dogs and, and a ukulele player but i've got a shoemaker who plays the cello and has a little dog will that do and so journalists get very very frustrated with response source um, and so what we try and do is we're trying to train you so that a, a journalist will never be frustrated with you. They will always go, oh, yeah, great. Someone from Miss Dashwoods. They're cool. We like them because they're to the point. They know who they are. They know who we are. And we do business. Um, so 
that's the best that we can do you know we don't want to be PRs I think that's probably true to say <laughs> I have to say I, I am on their list as a publisher yeah and one of the I just get hundreds of emails a day for totally irrelevant stuff with you know people trying to put on our site and it's really really irritating yes. um so yeah I, I the, the small tailored approach is much much better because all the stories that have come through or all the app from miss ashwood um are applicable i can see for businesses like you know in my you know my kind of size yeah. um which is great we've got some more questions here um sari says sounds perfect for someone who can't decide we need to have a PR company or go alone. As I am in the very beginning stage of the business, I can't really afford big costs of PR, but don't want to lose opportunities of not having a professional on my side as well. And Kate says she agrees with that as well. She's That's the really nice. I, I do have to say, if you are a small business and you are not yet ready to hire a PR company to take your story and proactively go out there, I, I, I just, I don't, it's a no brainer to me. I really don't think, for the price of what, two coffees a month? <laughs> there's no other no benefit for me telling you this but actually it's the opposite because the more people are on it the more competition there is for me so yeah don't join miss dashford's register please <laughs> <laughs> i think I, I think that's so nice as well is that um one of the you know i mean it's like talented ladies is that one of the lovely things about women working at this level together and you know, I mean, you read about disruptors, don't you, all the time, and everyone's a disruptor. And actually, what we're doing is disrupting. We're saying we don't have to do it the way it was done before. We can do it through much more personal relationships. We can do it in a more low-key fashion. And what I have absolutely loved about Miss Dashwood is, that as people have joined, what decent, lovely people they are. And it's it's absolutely no exaggeration to say that. How astonished I was! How ethical everybody's businesses are. Um, how they want to help each other i mean that stunned me too was that you know somebody put on on a facebook page you know that they that we've got a lovely company that does um uh eco-friendly deodorants um and somebody immediately another member immediately was emailing them saying i want to stock you in my clinic and i just thought that's so nice that people connect in this way because i guess what we're trying to do is facilitate connections and and yeah it is a different way of doing it it is it isn't the normal way but why should we none of us work the normal way we're, we're doing webinars from our you know offices like this we're, we're not doing it the old way anymore absolutely um carolyn has another question about press releases she says i have always associated a press release with having some new such a, a new product or service award or whatever to announce does this need to be the case uh, yes and no okay so um if you've got something new to announce it's really helpful but, but I did a press release with somebody this over the last summer and she didn't have anything new to, to talk about. So we had to really, you know, work it so it felt new. Um, what she did have was quite original though. She was creating a range of, um, she was stocking, uh, rather than creating, she was stocking, um, sounds, it's, it's, you can imagine this is a hard sell. She was stocking um, swim nappies for adults. Now that is a tough sell for anybody's business. But we talked it through. We talked about her inspiration for it. We talked about um, the fact that she'd started off with swim nappies for her kids, then realised there was a market here for, for older people who, who struggled with that and still needed to be allowed to swim. And so she, she'd done this journey of kind of going abroad and, and finding suppliers and stockists and, and even swimwear then that was, that was you know, incontinence friendly. Um, and of course, no one else is doing this. And this isn't going to, you know, make the front of the Vogue. Um, but it's still worth talking about, isn't it? So we wrote a press release for her that, that actually said that, and it's not new, and it wasn't sexy in any way. We said, you know, um, at last, adults, you know, adults who want to swim but struggle with continence issues have got a place to go. Um, and she was thrilled to bits because it was something she could send out that talked about her business. She didn't expect it was going to have a story straight away, but it certainly meant she had something to open the door with and say, this is who I am, this explains who I am and why I am and why I'm worth hearing. Now, what would be brilliant would be that she'd win an award for something and then she could put that at the very top, you know, new award for, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a good kicker. But these days, if, if you can find your news hook or your news peg in a different way, get your basic um, press release written and then wait for the, for the news hook. So, you know, 
the Meghan and Harry one is brilliant, isn't it? Because there must be wedding dress companies out there and wedding bridal shops who have got clients called Meghan and Harry. And they would have written a press release that says, you know, I am, you know, wedding dress uh, fabulous uh, from, from, and I, I happen to be in Windsor and, you know, I make great dresses. And they've made their press release. Then they can, they can put a kicker on it saying, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, royal wed I'm royal wedding ready because I've got a Meghan and Harry already. Um, you know, not, we don't all have something new to say, but we do all have to keep talking about ourselves. <laughs> You know, and, and yeah, back to my book. My book is no longer new. It came out, you know, one month ago. And I have to tell you, book publishing is brutal. You know, I'm, I'm, we're a month old and, and people are saying, well, it's not a new book anymore, is it? Um, so I'm now having to find new ways to talk about it. Um, my, my press release remains the same. It is, a, the book is what it is. I'm now finding those news pegs and I'm trying to be creative around it. Does that help? Yeah, Karen, does that answer your question? Um, if not, do you say and yes she says it does thank you very much um does anyone else have any questions victoria oh we've got one here oh so sari has to go her daughter's not well at school i just want to say thank you so much for this fantastic webinar i've learned so much and has opened my eyes to more opportunities to pr i'll be in touch and look forward to re-watching it thank you again thank you um, so any last question? I hope your daughter's okay, by the way, sorry. Mm. Um, I had a call earlier on about my son, but I, he, he's more prone to, to kind of exaggerate. I made him go back to class. <laughs> but he's, a, he's a teenager and he's always, funnily enough, just before double mass, always falls ill. Um, so Carolyn says, I have a press release. Where do I send it? Is there a central place journalists go for new ones? I would imagine to answer this, um, you need to um, actually pick the news outlet and find the, the right journalist in the press release too. There yeah, isn't central, don't say into central outlet. Yeah, no. The journalists never, never look there, never. Mm. Just, and that's that's the whole part of the thing, Carolyn. It's um, identifying which publication you want to be in, who are the journalists that write for that publication? Um, go, either they work in-house or they're freelancers and approach them directly. Um, brilliant, great advice, she says. <laughs> so thank you so much, Victoria. I, I'm amazed your voice is still going. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we managed to get it done without too many technical issues. I think we did well. I think we did, well, how are we doing for time? Uh, what's the time? 12.15. Oh, yes, 12.15. So Wow. <laughs> time flies you're having fun <laughs> thank you so much so if anyone is interested um i will send out a link to miss dashwood's register with the recording to everybody do you have a website they can go to if they want to find out more yes it's miss dashwood's register.co.uk brilliant and you are on twitter aren't you yes miss Dash we are at miss dashwood's register brilliant and kate says thank you thanks to you both very interesting. I've just bought Victoria's book as it's in line with what I do. Oh, I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Carolyn says, thank you, Victoria. Great session. Very much appreciated. Oh, it's, it's absolute pleasure to do it, I have to say. It's been fun. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for watching. I will send out a recording to everybody. Um, do, uh, it's at MissDashwood01, aren't you, on Twitter? No, oh, you're absolutely right. I can't even remember my own Twitter name, so that's, I'm, I'm rubbish. <laughs> Why didn't I think of a last slide with all my contacts on it? Oh. No, it's, honestly, every time I do a webinar, I'm like, next time I'm not going to make that mistake. There's always a mistake that you make. Don't worry. Um, so, yes, so you can find Victoria on Twitter at MissDashford01 if you have any more questions. Victoria, who's doing your social media, Eva says? Um, Kate and I are doing our social media. We 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 haven't got anyone else because you know we're like the rest. Everyone else, we we can't you know outsource that yet. So we're having to get better at doing it ourselves. And gosh, that's a learning curve, isn't it? I, I think actually, it's really good. I think when you are a small business, it is best to do your own social media because you're close to your the people you're serving, and you get yeah. to know them, and you get to the problems they're set, that you're solving for them. If you're one step yeah. removed, it's it's much harder in the early days to know that. I think that's really good advice, actually, yeah. I, I, I do, um, I, I love social media. I do our social media because I love connecting with people. So I love talking in any guise. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's virtual. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I am going to let Victoria go for lunch now. I'm going to lie down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 
and yeah, and I will, I will be on Twitter and Victoria will be on Twitter and thank you. Yeah. And I will say, say hi, come and say hi and I'll, I'll definitely follow up anyone back who comes and, and, and says hi and what have you. But yeah, and um, I will let YouTube now go and, 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 and turn this into a recording. Excellent. So, oh, Elizabeth says thank you for the Netherlands. Thank you from the Netherlands. So we're into Oh, hi, lovely. Hi. <laughs> so, thank you, everyone. And I'm going to say bye now. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.